now, breaking news from NBC4. She and General Harris and their respective teams have been working very, very hard in regard to our hospital build out. General Harris has people in the eight different sections of the state today working. Uh, Dr. Acton uh, has been spending all her time on this, so I didn't want to interrupt her from what she's doing. And I know for everyone out there, that will be a disappointment that you have to put up with uh, John and myself today. Our sign language interpreters uh, can be viewed again, the same place they were yesterday at uh, our Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities Facebook. That's Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities Facebook page. Now let me talk about uh, the urgency. And in describing that, let me start with what a huge problem we have as we look at the surge coming at us. Um, we do not have enough N95 masks. Uh, these are masks that are usually round. Uh, they're fitted to the face. Uh, all air that goes in and comes out goes directly through that part of the mask so that you don't breathe in germs, don't breathe in the virus. Uh, nor do you breathe them out. Uh, so it is the most secure mask that is made. And I think you can see why these masks are so very, very important. They're important for our medical personnel in our hospitals. Uh, they're important for our, our first responders. They're important for uh, people who work in nursing homes, or certainly when someone is suspected of maybe having uh, COVID-19, all of these people who are really at the front line, uh, who are there to protect us, who charge towards danger when the rest of us can, can pull back, they need this help. And what I'm hearing as I talk to people around the state uh, anecdotally, and what we also know by the data that we have, we do not have enough of these. Uh, we are having uh, people, uh, medical field, uh, who are wearing them much, much longer than they normally would. Normally, when they go in to see a patient, uh, they would wear that, then they would throw, throw that mask away. They're having to wear them a lot longer. And we have some people who need them that don't have them today. So we are working very, very hard. Uh, Matt Damschroeder is heading this up for us. He's got a great team. They're trying to source these masks from wherever they can get them. Uh, this is a problem that is not unique to Ohio. As you'll see by the, the, the nightly news, the morning news, this is a problem throughout, throughout the country. But we're doing everything we can to get more of these masks in to Ohio for all the folks that really need them. Um, we're working every single day on that. But we also have something else going on that will help us uh, and that we've been waiting for. And that is uh, the amazing work that has been done by Battelle Lab. Uh, Battelle Lab is telling us help is on the way. Innovation is really in Ohio's DNA. We need the help of Ohio scientists, our engineers, our researchers now more than ever. And we have, as I said, an amazing lab right here in central Ohio, the Battelle Lab. Battelle opened its doors in 1929 in Columbus with a mission to help solve the world's most pressing issues using groundbreaking science and technology. Battelle is the largest private nonprofit research and development organization in the world. Battelle's historical inventions have included, among many things, contributions to the Xerox copy machine, cruise control, the compact disc, barcodes, and on and on. Uh, Battelle's amazing labs do phenomenal work every single day. They now have developed, now have developed a machine, machines, with the capability to sterilize 80,000 used masks per day. 
We have two of these machines here in Ohio ready to go. There's another one now that's being assembled in New York. They have another one on the way to New York. One is ready to be sent to Seattle, and one is ready to go to the Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And they have the ability in the next few weeks to make more and send them out to different parts of the country. So what I'm talking about today, the urgency of getting these online so they can start towards that 80,000 masks per day goal um, is not just for Ohioans. Uh, it is for people throughout the country. Um, they're ready to go forward. They're ready to move. But we've been waiting for FDA approval. Uh, this is something uh, that the lieutenant governor has worked directly on uh, and has worked extensively on. Uh, so obviously has Battelle. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting. Last night, actually this morning, um, a little after 1 a.m., we got what we thought was good news. Uh, and the good news was that they'd approved it and we could start moving forward. And so when I got up, I saw that. But then I had a conversation not long after that uh, with Lou Von Thayer, who heads up Battelle. Um, and he told me uh, about 8 o'clock this morning that it wasn't clear. We weren't ready to go. We were not in a situation where we could go to the 80 thousand. Um, needless to say, I was quite angry. Um, I picked up the phone. I called President Trump. Uh, the president called me back. We had a great conversation. Uh, he told me that he would do everything he could to make sure that this got done today. Uh, he understood, because I told him the gravity of this for Ohio, but not just for Ohio, but for other states other locations, um, told me that he would take action, uh, for which I'm very grateful. Um, and as some of you may have seen, he also tweeted a couple times. Um, I've also been in contact with our two senators, Senator Portman and Senator Brown. And I appreciate their help. I've also been in contact with Congressman Stivers and Balderson, and I appreciate very, very much their help. This is not going to solve, when we get it, it's not going to solve every single problem. We know that. It's not going to stop the surge coming at us. But it is going to help, and it has the ability to help here in Ohio, and has the ability to help across this country. And that's why I really wanted to hold this press conference today, uh, to make the appeal directly to the FDA but also to express to other governors, to others in other states, that this is help on the way if we can just get it clear. Now, uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, has been back and forth after this, after these conversations, uh, has been back and forth now with the FDA. Uh, I know that Battelle has been doing the same thing. And, and several minutes ago, uh, I talked directly to the FDA commissioner, Commissioner Hahn. Uh, he was headed into the Situation Room. He had called me, uh, and I appreciate the call. And he said that this was going to be cleared up today, uh, that he thought that we would be able to have what we wanted. Uh, and what we want is help for our first responders. Uh, what, we help, what we want is help uh, for our, our medical personnel who desperately need this. So. We're not there yet. We've not gotten the approval. Um, but I am grateful for the call, and I'm hopeful. Again, we are holding this press conference today uh, to get everyone's attention. Um, we had tried and going back and forth for days. I got sick of waiting, frankly. Uh, we owe this to Ohioans. We owe this. Uh, to people across this country. 
Let me now ask uh, Lou, see if Lou is up on the screen yet. Uh, we're following our distancing. Lou, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Governor. You want to tell us a little bit about the, uh, the technology and the science behind this? Because uh, that's your area, and it's certainly, certainly not mine. Sure. And first, sir, I'd like to thank you and Lieutenant Governor and our representatives and others have helped us move to the top of the FDA's pile. You know, they're inundated with a lot of new uh, and uh, we felt this was very important to help. And uh, I believe our interaction was close today. Very much appreciate this. So the process that we developed, we actually proved in. Lou, we're, we're, Lou we're, we're kind of losing some of your comments. I don't know whether that's on which end, but uh, I don't know where your mic is or whether that will, will help. Uh, Eric, is there any way to? Well, let's come back to you in a second. You think it'll come back in? Um, we will come back to you in a second. OK. Sure. John, you want to add anything? Sure. While we're waiting for the technology, Governor covered this very well. Uh, the, the, the bottom line is, is that we want everybody to know we've been pushing this for a week. We've been waiting patiently. We wanted to make sure that the FDA could give the validation of the science that what Battelle was working on. We were told on Wednesday that they would have a solution by the end of the week. I reminded them that the end of the week was Saturday and that we expected something by then. Uh, when we got the call, when I actually got the call uh, 11 19 last night or 1 19 in the morning, uh, I was thrilled. Uh, I thought we were on the way to getting this done, but then the, the devil was in the details. It was only allowed to occur on a limited basis. That's just not good enough. As the governor articulated, uh, and I want everybody to know who's on the front lines of this. Your, your governor, your lieutenant governor, and the entire team is fighting for those PPEs for you because we know that without them, that your, your job is made unnecessarily more dangerous. And, and so that's why this is all happening. Plus, they need to get out to the nursing homes. And the, understand, folks, that even when we get through this, masks are still going to be necessary as part of what we do to keep a safe environment, particularly for the people who are most vulnerable. And so that's what we're, we're pressing for. Uh, the conversations that Battelle uh, and I have had with the FDA and then the conversations that the governor had just a few moments ago give us optimism. But this needs to be approved today. Uh, we can't tiptoe toward the solution. We have to run at full speed. FDA approval gives us the ability to run at full speed at, at decontaminating the masks and be able to redeploy them into healthcare settings so that we can protect the people on the front lines. Uh, and I've known the governor for a long time. I don't know that I ever saw him more frustrated than he was this morning with this. And he is absolutely determined that this will happen today. Uh, and we will not let up until it gets done. Let me, uh, uh, Lou's going to come back up in a moment, but let me just give uh, the cases and numbers update uh, for today, uh, Sunday. And I would also uh, tell everyone uh, who's watching, detailed numbers are available on the dashboard at coronavirus.ohio.gov. That's coronavirus, one word, .ohio.gov. Uh, we now have... Uh, 1,653 confirmed cases. Uh, we have 29 deaths, uh, 403 hospitalizations, number of ICU admissions, 139. Uh, counties with cases, 66. The age range is 1 to 98. Median age is 52 years. Uh, total tested, uh, 24,376. Um, as of, of today. So Lou, let's, let's uh, try you again. Uh, again, the CEO of Battelle, um, we appreciate what you all are doing and we're anxious for you to start uh, cranking out uh, the sterilization of, the, of these masks. And uh, I, I believe you might indicate also how many times that you can, you can do this per mask. I think that's an interesting fact. Uh, yes, sir, can you hear me better? I can hear you. Okay. 
So first off, Governor, I don't know how much you heard before, but let me thank you and Lieutenant Governor for your tireless efforts to help us get these things through the FDA. Uh, the FDA is inundated with many new uh, ideas coming in and to get this on top of the pile has been very helpful and I'm optimistic we'll get through those approvals very soon, hopefully today. Uh, so we actually developed a technology at Patel. We did this a couple years ago uh, with the FDA that showed that we could take N95 respirators and we could clean them with a concentrated hydrogen peroxide vapor uh, for a period of several hours and basically decontaminate them for lots of things, including bugs that are worse than COVID-19. We've since uh, tested that here. We've proven it. And we started about a month ago to build systems up, and we've now built a system that can scale and do tens of thousands a day, as you've spoken of. Uh, each mask can be cleaned and reused up to 20 times. And the way this process will work is we're coordinating with local hospitals, starting here in central Ohio, then we want to expand out into those places that you mentioned earlier. So the, Ohio's will, the hospitals will collect the mask, they get wrapped in plastic, uh, then as they get ready to ship, they put them in a second plastic bag. That bag is wiped down with alcohol to ensure the outside of it's not contaminated. It's couriered to our facility. And then Battelle experts, scientists and technicians who are trained in BSL operations uh, in full protective gear will um, treat each mask as if it's contaminated, load those masks into these uh, 8 by 8 by 20 standard storage containers, like a like container you see trucks pulling around on the highway with liners and sensors. And we will then um, put those masks under pressure for a couple hours with the hydrogen peroxide. We'll then let them cool off basically for about another five or six hours to get the parts per million less than one uh, of hydrogen peroxide before they're brought back out. We will then repackage and send the same masks back to the same hospitals. And uh, we believe this process, we can do uh, 80,000 and more here locally, and we can add systems as we need to. And we are working parts and supply chains to be able to expand and put more systems out across the country. Well, that, that's, that's exciting. Um, you you want to go through a, a little bit um, kind of what the future might look like. Uh, you've got some already, I think, in, in place. You tell me you had one in place, maybe? That's right. We have one in New York State on Long Island that was actually built over the weekend, is ready to operate once we get the EUA approval. Uh, we have another one in route uh, for New York City and a place we've negotiated with health professionals there to set up. We have one en route to Seattle. Um, we would like to add, and we, and we expect to go to Chicago, Washington, D.C. next. We'll have enough materials to do three to four more systems over the next week. And we're trying to work with uh, federal and local health officials to find the best spots to put those where the need is the highest. Uh, the supply chain then will become our limiting factor and we're trying to speed that up. Uh, we'll be able to build about two systems a week after that. And we're looking for some alternate um, uh, pumps and things that we might be able to use and get FDA approval that could modify the system slightly to expand faster. That's great, Lou. Um, why don't, if you could hang there with us, um, we're going to take some questions, and um, if anyone has a question um, for Lou, now would be an appropriate uh, time to do it. Mr. Adi. Jim Adi from WHIO TV in Dayton. Thank you, Governor. When perhaps will we see that these uh, this technology be used in Ohio? And when would you expect to get a decision? You say today. You mean this evening, tonight, tomorrow morning? But when would we see well, this? Well, let me, let me start on that. I, I expected a decision before today. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of an impatient guy. But, the, you know, lives are literally at stake. Uh, and so, you know, this is why we held this press conference. We want everyone in the country to understand the importance of this. Um, I, that's why I called the president. I don't call the president very often. Uh, but this was important to do. Now, the commissioner, as I said, called me, and I talked with him a couple minutes before, literally before walking in here, and he assured me, assured me that this would be done today. So it's not done yet, but, um, you know, I am optimistic, cautiously optimistic, and, 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 and waiting. Uh, Lou, why don't you take uh, the, the, the second part of that, or the first part of that, in regard to when, when will this, is this ready to go? Let's say you get the approval today. What does this mean to uh, the ability of, of us here in Ohio to, to uh, uh, reuse these? 
Yes, sir. So we would start tomorrow in Ohio. We've already tested thousands of masks. Ohio Health has been our partner in this, helping us think through the logistics change and how the uh, hospitals would collect the mask and get them back and forth. Uh, so we've already done a few thousand of these in a test case, and we're now ready to turn the operation on. So we have one system uh, with four containers fully up and operational today in Ohio, and uh, I suspect we will start to take inventory tomorrow and be sending masks back on Tuesday of this week. Uh, the EUA, the FDA approved last night, would allow us to do 10,000 masks a day. We expect to hit that on Tuesday. Uh, we're hopeful with the approvals that we'll get today, we'll be able to go well beyond that very quickly. And you have the, you have the, the capacity uh, on a good day, I guess, uh, to hit 80,000, I think you told me. That, that is correct. Just as a follow-up, does this compromise the integrity of each of those at all? So, so up to 20 times uh, the integrity of the mask is maintained. After that, uh, you will see degradation in the mask. So we actually keep a count to how many times the masks go through this process so that any mask is damaged, any mask that has, is soiled or has other items on it, or any mask that hits that 20th um, recycle will be thrown away. Hi, this is uh, Shane Stegmiller with HANA News Service. Uh, so are both of the systems in Ohio, they're deployed here at Patel in Columbus, correct? Uh, yes. That's correct. They're actually at our West Jefferson facility about 20 miles west of our headquarters. And are you taking masks from all over the state when once you get the approval to go, or are you just kind of focusing on Central Ohio, or how is that working? No, no we, uh, we plan to take from all over the state. Uh, we've been coordinating through the hospital association with each of the systems, and uh, we'll stand ready to help everyone in the state. And how long does this process take uh, in terms of hospital bagging all of them up, putting them in the shipment, sending them to you, getting them sanitized and sent back to the hospital? How um, is it like a couple of days or, or what's what's the timeline on that? So we believe same day turn. Now, I don't know what happens on the logistics of getting it to and from the hospital. It depends on how far away those are. But we'll be turning at 80,000 masks a day. Um, and we should be able to keep up with that demand for some time here in Ohio and get literally 24 hour turn out of our plant plus the logistics of getting them back and forth. Now, do you have a specialized courier that you're using that you send directly to the hospital or the hospital sends you or you're not just, are you sending them through the mail? How do they get to you? Yeah. So, so right now the hospitals are organizing and we're working those couriers. Uh, we're also talking to two of the bigger providers, Cardinal and Steris, uh, potentially to have them help in some cities with the logistics activities. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Andrew Tobias with Cleveland.com. Um, did the FDA in any way raise concerns that uh, a larger scale up of this would reduce the efficacy or safety of this process or otherwise explain why they chose a, a limited approval? I, I think there's just been a lot of think moving parts at once and to get the understanding, what really matters is that you get the right concentration of pressure of hydrogen peroxide to each of the masks. As long as that happens, it doesn't matter how many are a container, as long as there's room around them to absorb the hydrogen peroxide. I think helping them understand that and being able to share some of our data um, around those items is what's helping us get through um, some of the misunderstandings early on. And, and these are concerns the FDA raised then? Uh, so we've been back and forth in a dialogue. Uh, I think they're very comfortable with the technology and it's the logistics and just making sure they understand uh, exactly how we're going to use the system is the parts that we're working through the final details on. Thank you. And a follow-up for the governor. Um, there have been some reports where some governors have maybe been concerned about criticizing the president's response and possibly harming their state's response and their ability to get supplies and things like that. Um, do you feel comfortable that you can raise these concerns as needed? And it, did you consider this when you made this decision today? And I didn't hear the last part. Did I do what? I, if you considered, you know, the, the effects of maybe angering the federal government by choosing to criticize them in the way that you did, going look, public, basically. Uh, look, look, I called the president. Uh, I had no, no concerns about that. Uh, I called the president this morning, called the White House operator. Uh, the president called me back. He said, what do you need? What's going on? I explained to him. Uh, we had a good, good conversation. Uh, he got it. He understood it. Uh, he understands the importance of protecting our first responders, our hospital personnel. He understands that we don't have uh, enough. And um, no, he was he was great. He said, "Look, I, I'm I'm moving." He said, "I'll get I'll get this done." Thank you. 
Good afternoon, gentlemen. Jeff Reddick from ABC6 News here in Columbus. Uh, yesterday, Governor, you um, spoke quite a bit about asking people in the state or businesses in the state to donate a lot of items besides masks, uh, PPE that are needed right now. Uh, is there a process by which Battelle could begin to sterilize other types of PPE? And then to follow up, Governor, would you also state whether or not that outreach helped yesterday, if you know? Well, uh, my understanding, uh, and Lou, I guess I'll so make sure I get this right. Why don't you just take the question on, the question is whether or not we're limited to the N95s. And my understanding is you are at this point. Is that That's right. So, so we believe we will be able to use the same technology to decontaminate other items, but we're still in R&D for that. We need to prove that in. Uh, this particular approval we've requested for the FDA is actually just for the N95 mask. We uh, plan to go back with other items as we finish the R&D and prove that we can safely decontaminate those things as well, including pieces of respirators, uh, ventilators, uh, reusable parts that are typically thrown away that we expect to come into shortage. Any estimate how far off that could be? I don't have a good answer for that right now. I do know that our team's on a war footing. Uh, we've been working around the clock for the last month. So I'm very proud of the women and men of Patel, and they've been um, working very hard to try to do the best they can to help our state and our country. And then again, Governor, has the outreach that you made yesterday, do you know if there's been any immediate impact as far as donations of those items? Uh, you know, I have not checked with my team. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that. I got some indication last night that we had some, but I don't have any numbers at all for you. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Halpern with NBC4. Yesterday, both from Battelle and the governor, it seemed pretty clear the expectation here was that these can and will clean up to 80,000 masks a day. Yet the FDA, in a statement they sent me this morning, you know, they seemed to just get that understanding today that the 80,000. So was there some miscommunication or what did you hear from the FDA as to why they're only allowing this 10,000 to start when it seemed pretty clear from the conversations yesterday we could do 80,000? Well, I'm not going to get into everything back and forth. Uh, John Houston, the Lieutenant Governor, was involved in some of those discussions. Uh, I know, I know uh, that Lou was as well. Uh, let me just say that uh, it's going to get resolved. So I don't know if you want to add anything, John or, or Lou. I can, look, I can just add this, that we we had daily conversations, daily outreaches through that process. Uh, you know, from our side, we thought it was abundantly clear. Uh, but it, frankly, you know, we are where we are at today. This needs to get approved today. And we've had the reassurances that will. We just need to make sure that it happens. Uh, and, you know, the FDA. Uh, has been communicative with me. I've talked with them on, on a daily basis, but we are where we are. We have to get this approved today. They are very clear. The president, the FDA commissioner, has given personal reassurances to the governor on this, uh, and we're, uh, it just needs to happen. And Lou, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I think that's well said. Thank you. And we will notify everyone when that happens. Hi, Governor. This is Jake Zuckerman from the Ohio Capital Journal. Uh, previously, Dr. Acton has told us how the CDC sent Ohio a faulty test kit in February, which really put us behind the ball in testing. We don't have enough PPE. The national stockpile hasn't cut it. You called this FDA decision reckless, and it took a phone call with the president to get maybe results today. Do you think the federal government is just behind the ball in this pandemic? Um, you know, look, when I, when I, when I talked to the president, um, he was great about it. He says, we got to fix it. Um, uh, he did what he needed to do. Uh, and I believe we're moving forward. I think that when we come out of this and we will come out of it, uh, and we look at the lessons learned, one of the lessons that we are learning as a country, as a people, is that public health, we have to invest more in public health. This is not a Democrat problem. It's not a Republican problem. It's not to blame one president or another 
president. This has been going on for a long time in this country, that we do not focus enough on public health. And so that's a lesson, I think, that we will all take away from this. The second lesson uh, is we never want to be in a position where we can't buy very important medical equipment, medical things uh, in this country. We got to be able to source this stuff in this country, uh, so that we're not. We're you know we have found some things that we're looking for. Well, they come out of Italy. Well, we can't get any of them. Well, they came out of China. Well, for a while we couldn't get any of those. So uh, those are just two big lessons, and I, and I kind of like to look at it from the from the big point of view. Uh, that's these are lessons that we all have learned. I have learned. Everyone has learned. I think that we got to focus on public health, and we got to make sure that we make in this country the essential things that we need uh, to keep us safe. Well, to follow, why do you think it takes uh, a public confrontation with the gov with the president's FDA and a phone call with the president to to get these kind of changes made? Look, I'm not I'm not going to go into that. Uh, I don't I don't you know know everything that's going on. Uh, you know, bureaucracies sometimes move slow, uh, and that's not just true <laughs> in, in uh, Washington. It's also true sometimes in Columbus. And so, uh, quite candidly, I have received calls, maybe not as urgent, uh, you know, from people, uh, and I've had to go into our bureaucracy and try to get it done. Uh, so that's. I sort of felt the president felt the way I feel sometimes, and that is, oh, you know, I got to go do it. You know, this is not supposed to be happening this way. And that just happens uh, as much as you try for it not to happen. And that's the attitude, sort of the impression I got uh, in regard to what the president's reaction was. He said, look, let's go fix it. And that was the right attitude. Yeah, can I, John? I want to I add just something to that. Look, the. This is about escalating the concern to make sure that the people who are down in the bureaucracy are, are really hearing the importance of it. One of the things we tried to emphasize all week is that we have people who don't have access to these materials and they need them. And if you're not going to give us this solution, you need to give us something else. Uh, and really what the governor did is what, is what anybody in a position of leadership did, should do. If they're not solving the problem through the regular process, then you have to bring energy and urgency to that process to make sure that's happened. And that's what today is all about. That's what the governor st started to do this morning. That's why we're here today, is to, to bring that sense of urgency to the bureaucracy so that they know we've got to have this because people on the ground depend on it. And and that's, that's, what, that's what your leaders are supposed to do. Thank you. Hi, uh, Marty Schladen, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, Governor, first of all, uh, do you think that what's happening today illustrates that state leaders such as yourself are being left to manage the response to this crisis? No. Look, uh, in fact, just the opposite. Uh, every time I've, I've called the president, every time I've called the vice president, every time I've called the White House and had a specific ask, they've gotten on it. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, FDA does what it does. Um, you know, they're in, in, in defense of them, they got, you know, they're trying to make sure things are safe. I get that. Uh, but sometimes you just have to rattle it, and, and that's true with the bureaucracy anywhere. It's the truth with bureaucracy in Columbus, in, in Ohio. It's the same. Sometimes you just have to say, look, this is really important. And the reason it's important is we have to protect the people who are on the front line. We don't have enough of these. We do not have enough of these masks. And we're frantically trying to get enough of these masks. And we have a solution, at least for part of the problem, in that we can clean 80,000 of these every single day. Free us. Let us go do it. That's the message. And sometimes you just have to say it that way to get things moving. The other thing I wanted to ask about was um, I'm getting regular messages from people with relatives in the prisons and in the jails. Uh, are, is anything under consideration right now to get some of those people out of those institutions? Look, the most important thing that we can do um, is to keep everyone in our prison safe. Uh, we know that there's potential problems anytime you have that large number of people gathered together. Uh, but uh, our director 
uh, has worked very, very hard with her team to do everything that she can to keep the virus out of the prisons. So I don't think we should think it's an automatic solution to set a number of people who have been convicted, who have been sentenced, uh, set them loose, uh, and assume that they're going to be able to uh, stay free of the virus. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure that uh, when, when you look at that and say, well, okay, we will let some people loose, what makes us think that they're going to be in a better position outside than, than, than inside? And they have a sentence to serve. So our focus has been on protecting uh, the people who work in the prison and the people that, who are the prisoners. Uh, that's our obligation. And I can tell you, after having worked with uh, DRC for a number of years, I did this when I was lieutenant governor, uh, they focus every single day on the safety of their prisoners and the safety of their personnel. Um, and they do a very, very good job. Uh, the director has come up with a, a way to make sure that when someone goes into receiving, they go from the jail into receiving, uh, that they are not put out into the general population until it is figured out that they do not have uh, COVID-19. So they are in that uh, reception area, uh, and she's got it figured out how it, it works in there to, to keep people in smaller groups. Uh, they're there for, I believe, she told me five weeks, uh, and to make sure that they're not taking something in, in, into the prison. Uh, they've taken other efforts. They've cut out, cut out visiting, uh, which is tough. That's tough for everybody. It's tough for the families. It's tough. But again, it, it's the same thing we've done with nursing homes. It keeps people safer during this time of great, great danger. So uh, we're working every day, and we're going to continue to do that to keep everyone safe. Thank you, Governor. Hello, Governor Ryan Schmelz with Spectrum News. Would you like to see any reforms done at the FDA to help this approval process move quicker or smoother <laughs> in the future? Uh, I don't pretend to be an FDA expert. Um, you know, I've expressed uh, when I was a United States Senator some frustration uh, at the slow approval rate of the FDA. Uh, you know, look, we want them, their job is to keep us safe. Um, but also, uh, you know, Delays that are just delays don't make any sense. So I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, do a dissertation today on on the FDA. Uh, I'm focused on Ohio. I'm focused on this was a problem. Uh, we think maybe we've got this fixed now. We're going to find out later today. Um, we do what we have to do to protect Ohioans. Yeah. Thank you. Could, could I could I add something to that? Is that as we've talked with the FDA this week, you know, their focus is on safety. That's what, that's what they're doing. They're, people are coming to them with innovations. They're, they're focused on safety. Our focus, though, was on the urgency of what the problem is on the ground, that people don't have these. And, and so that's the, the natural tension that builds between the two. We're pushing for speed. They're pushing for safety. And, and in the end, uh, you know, we're going to get there today, what, but this was necessary to, to, to force that change to occur. What happened today, uh, one of the things that has happened today, going back and forth, back and forth, is we've compressed uh, into a short period of time what sometimes just takes days. And we've said, okay, you got questions? Ask the questions. Patel will give you the answers. Do it. Let's just do it. Get it done. And so, uh, you know, it is the compression of, of those questions and answers into a very short time frame that we hope will allow us to get the approval before midnight tonight. And so, Blue and his team, who do, have done a great job, uh, can, you know, be freed and go help, help us save people. Thank you. This is Jackie Borchert from the Cincinnati Enquirer. Um, a few days ago, Governor, you shared a chart that showed we need 11.7 million estimated um, of these respirators. So I'm wondering if Lou could maybe um, add some context to what kind of impact these units, specifically in Ohio, would have on uh, our needs for these masks. 
Sure. So I, I, I would add, um, I think we're going to continue to see more supply of new masks coming on. Uh, and we'll see more people building out. And then again, uh, we can handle, we believe, 80,000 a day with what we've currently built. And we can build out more capacity here if there's more need. So we can actually scale that as we're putting systems around the country, we can keep another system here. So we believe we can help uh, make this not be an issue over the next days and weeks uh, as we catch up from a logistics standpoint for the state of Ohio. And that's why we're um, so intent on getting this solution in place as fast as possible. And we're also, of course, working every single day uh, to find more masks uh, in the market. Uh, to find more respirators and all the all the things that we we have talked about, we have a team working on that every day. I made an appeal yesterday, uh, so you know we're doing everything we can. We're we're calling calling everybody in, uh, bring bring this stuff in because we know uh, when this surge hits, um, we're going to need them. We're going to need it all, and it you know the urgency of today is, is simply because we know we have today people in the front line who don't have the masks that they need. We know there are people in the front line today in Ohio who are using their masks much longer uh, than they normally would and much longer than medical science would indicate that they probably should, but they're doing it because they don't have any choice. We're trying to free Battelle up so they can help uh, these people who are on the front line every single day, God bless them, and making a difference for us. And who we're going to depend on in the weeks ahead um, to take care of anybody who is out there who, who comes down with, with COVID-19. Uh, and just to follow up, Governor, uh, can you uh, explain a little bit where we are in terms of ramping up testing and availability of tests across the state? Uh, no, I can't. Uh, Dr. Acton can do that tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thanks. Hi, Governor and Lieutenant Governor. It's Karen Kassler from Ohio Public Radio and Television State House News Bureau. I know you say this is a compressed timeline, but I'm wondering why the urgency is today and not perhaps a couple of days earlier in the week. Uh, and sure. also, if you don't get the answer that you're looking for today, might you go ahead and do this anyway? Well, we're not going to get there. We're not going to answer hypothetical. We're not going to go there. Uh, I've been assured by the president. I've been assured by, by the commissioner that this will, in fact, happen today. Um, look, when you're dealing with people uh, and they tell you it's coming and it's going to be any day and you generally believe them, but at some point uh, when you get to the, the point where okay, it's been approved, and you say, oh, that's great, and then when the sun comes up, you, you basically look down and find, well, they've only approved a fraction of what we know we can do. That's it. It's time to move. It, it's, time, it's time to go. I mean, you want to deal with people in, in, in good faith. Uh, you, you, want, you understand, as John said, the Lieutenant Governor said, that they, ha they have an obligation to keep it safe. Uh, but it's time to get on with it. And so we kind of compress this into today. So the questions go out, the answers come back, and we boom, 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 get this done. And um, we'll see. Thank you. Okay, looks like we are, oh. Governor, that was the last question. That was the last question. All right, well, Lou, thank you. Thanks, thanks to your team. Uh, tell them all we are very grateful for what they're doing, and uh, we hope when the sun comes up tomorrow, you guys are ready to roll. Uh, thank you, Governor, and thank you for your support, and uh, you and the Lieutenant Governor and everyone else's tireless efforts. So we're all in this together, and we appreciate your leadership. Thank you very much. Well, as, as uh, we all knew that we were not planning this press conference today, but uh, I I want to close by sharing a performance uh, that was specifically shared with our office, came in to us by Malone University's Corral, uh, and here's what they wrote. Uh, this is the first performance of the Malone University Virtual Choir under the direction of John C. Peterson, who also serves as director of the All Ohio State Fair Youth Choir, and of course we've seen uh, him at the fair many times. These students prepared a blessing from the Book of Numbers called The Lord Bless You and Keep You by Peter Lutkin. Uh, they've taken social distancing and turned into social distance sing. So I thank Dr. Peterson, Malone University Virtual Choir, and to everyone out there, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And we will end with the Malone Choir.
That was great. We thank them very, very much. We will see you all tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Thank you. All right, we've been listening to Governor Mike DeWine give us an update on the state of the coronavirus here in the state of Ohio, namely 1,653 new cases here in the state of COVID-19 cases. Specifically, 29 of those have been deaths, a little over 400 hospitalizations, and about 139 people in ICU tonight. In retrospect, to put that into perspective, they have tested at about 24,000 people in this situation. The governor also taking time to give an update to us on a situation that they've been working on for about a week now behind the scenes, specifically dealing with people on the front lines of this situation need to have personal protective equipment and specifically masks. They're called uh, N95 masks and Battelle has been working with the governor's administration to try and come up with a, a machine, if you will, that was, could sterilize up to 80,000 masks per day. And throughout all of this week, they've been trying to get approval from the FDA to get this machine and these machines up and running. Now, NBC4's Eric Halperin was also there at that press conference. He's joining us live from what happened inside the room and a little more on that. Eric? Well, Mark, yesterday we were told there wasn't going to be a press conference unless there was some significant news to announce today. Well, the governor said what he had to say today was urgent, not just for the state, but for the entire country, because as you were mentioning, those N95 masks, they're needed not just in Ohio, they're needed all across the country as we work through this pandemic. We learned yesterday that Columbus-based Patel has developed a system that can clean and sterilize up to 80,000 of those masks a day Per, per machine. All that we were waiting for was that FDA approval. That FDA approval came today, but it wasn't exactly what the governor thought was going to come. The approval only allowed for 10,000 of those masks to be cleaned and only here in Ohio. The governor was clear he was frustrated by this decision because he wanted Battelle to be able to maximize those systems to clean and sterilize and send back all those masks they could to the hospitals. So much so that the governor called the president about this this morning, something he says he does not often do. The president is now pushing for this. The governor said he also talked with the FDA commissioner and he says they are hopeful that this full approval will get done today. All of these people who are really at the front line, uh, who are there to protect us, who charge towards danger when the rest of us can, can pull back, they need this help. But this needs to be approved today. Uh, we can't tiptoe toward the solution. We have to run at full speed. FDA approval gives us the ability to run at full speed at, at decontaminating the masks and be able to redeploy them into healthcare settings so that we can protect the people on the front lines. And if the full FDA approval does come today, the systems will not only be used in Ohio, but along with other states that are in need. Live and local at the State House, I'm Eric Halpern, NBC4.
All right, Eric, thank you. The governor saying that he hopes before midnight tonight that approval will come through from the FDA saying, quote, free us, let us go do it. Now we'll have a, a complete update on this situation coming up on NBC4 at 6 tonight, but for right now, we're going to return to regular programming.